The mega seizure of mega upload. What does the government takedown of the popular hosting site mean for internet freedom and copyright law? Apparently, the government doesn't need any law to stand in their way of going after people over copyright infringement. Days after SOPA and PIPA were voted down, the U.S. government bypassed criminal courts to shut down and seize the assets of the website over what they see as copyright infringement. So is this an overstepping of federal authority? And what does it reveal about a revolving door relationship between government and commercial interests? Julie Samuels is a staff attorney for the Electronic Frontier Foundation. She focuses on intellectual property issues and joins me now to break down the case. Julie, what does this say about a federal overstepping of law? Well, Abby, we've seen this time and again where the government does exactly that and goes in, takes down whole sites because it alleges that there are, are um, that content exists on those sites that infringes copyrights, but it does this without paying any attention to all of the content on those sites that is completely legal content, and that's incredibly troubling. Exactly. Uh, well, that just brings me to my next question is, how is it legal to shut down a hosting site that hosts hundreds, if not thousands, of people who aren't infringing copyright material, I mean, and just to seize the assets of that? How is that legal? Well, the government would, you know, I, I think that there are serious problems with what the government did. But the government would argue, I think, if, if they were sitting in this chair, that they believe there's so much infringement on this site, they have no choice but to take the whole thing down. Now, I think this is this is not a good reading of the law. And in fact, what, what the law does say is that if a service or a product, or in this case, a website, has what's called substantial non-infringing uses, then the product, the site, whatever, is legal. And the, the primary example of this is the VCR. Um, way back in the 80s, the uh, movie industry sued uh, Betamax for the early versions of the VCR. And it was in a, a five to four vote in the Supreme Court that found that the VCR was legal. And, and they found it was legal because there were these substantial non-infringing uses. There were things you could do with the VCR that did not infringe copyrights. The same, I believe, is true with cloud storage services like Mega Upload. What about uh, the TV Shack takedown as well, who were just simply linking to sites that held copyright material? That's Under actually, what auspices of, of that uh, did the government sure. say? I actually believe that the, the sites that are taken down due to linking, uh, where they would just link to what is allegedly copyrighted material, are more troubling because, in fact, it seems that uh, the law is pretty clear that linking is not copyright infringement. Uh, merely linking is doing nothing wrong. Uh, do you think that it was symbolic at all for the government to have taken down these sites just days after SOPA and PIPA were voted down? I would say that it's hard to believe it was a coincidence. Can you talk a little bit about how uh, continue? I, it was literally a day or two after, um, you know, and, and as you said at the outset here, we've seen time and again that the government does have this incredibly comfortable and troubling relationship with, uh, in this instance, it's the movie industry. but. Uh, we've seen time and again that the traditional content industry, that Hollywood, that the RIAA and the MPAA is able to exert uh, some power and, and kind of push the government to do certain things like take down websites like Mega Upload. What is the, the collusion uh, that you're saying exists? I mean, explain a little bit more about that. Is there really, you know, massive lobbying dollars going behind the government, really, uh, from Hollywood? Well, the first piece is, as you said, massive lobbying dollars, and that completely happens. I mean, but but what the good news is when we talk about lobbying dollars is that, as we saw during SOPA and PIPA, for example, um, uh, that that can be rebutted, right? When enough people get involved, no matter how massive the lobbying dollars were, and don't get me wrong, they were massive. Uh, when internet users make their voices heard, we can affect change. But it's not just in lobbying dollars. Uh, the Hollywood industries often go and give presentations to law enforcement, uh, explaining why they think this should be a law enforcement priority. And, and just to be clear, we are talking about the same law enforcement that that uh, enforces all of the laws in the United States. And I think it's it's worth having a conversation about whether uh, shutting down these sites for some alleged copyright infringement is the best use of our law enforcement dollars. What about the current legislation? You know, SOPA, PIPA, and now CISPA. Is it just going to keep morphing until something gets passed, kind of under the radar? I mean, how come we haven't seen this massive uproar against CISPA like we did 
against SOPA? Well, I think we are seeing a massive uproar against CISPA. Unfortunately, it passed through the House, but I think it still has got an uphill battle in the Senate, and, and there are some uh, fundamental flaws with that bill. That's not a copyright bill, though, right. so it's a slightly different issue. But I think we, we're we staying vigilant. I think we are going to see, again, uh, new versions of SOPA and PIPA, probably not until after the election. It's kind of a toxic subject matter right now, uh, which is good news. So let's talk a little bit about Kim.com's case. Um, mm -hmm. Can you just give us a brief update on what's going on? Well, the, the, as I understand, Kim.com is still in New Zealand, and he's not been extradited to the United States. So that could take some time. Um, and, and before that happens, procedurally, nothing will really get rolling until he's here um, before the United States court. And, and what do you see happening with all this? Uh, do you see more federal overstepping, taking down websites willy-nilly? I mean. What do you see the future is of our protecting our rights on the internet? Well, I think it's actually a very important issue, and I think you just really hit the nail on the head about what's at stake. Um, and it, I, I should have mentioned at the outset that we are actually representing an innocent third party in this case who lost access to his data. And we're, we're trying to push the government and mega upload and the service provider and all of the parties to come up with a process to make sure that innocent third parties like our client, get their data back. And this is fundamentally important because there needs to be a process in place. The next time the government takes down one of these sites, this process needs to be in place from the outset. Because now it's a huge project, we're all scrambling, it's going to logistically be difficult to get the data returned. But if the government had been more responsible and more concerned at the outset, I think it would have been a lot easier to make that happen. Julie, just to make this clear, your client was hosting on Mega Upload, not hosting anything copyright himself, correct? Correct. He was, uh, he, our client, his name is Kyle Goodwin. He owned a, owns a business called Ohio Sports Net, where they cover local high school sports in Ohio. And as part of that, they videotaped, for example, a lot of sports games. Right. The, the whole season, for example, of girls' high school soccer. And he would share these videos with his producers across the state. And uh, the files were rather large. They couldn't be sent over email. It didn't make sense to drive around the state, so they shared all of their files on Mega Upload. Uh, he had a premium subscription, and he also had everything backed up, incidentally, on an external hard drive, which crashed two days before Mega Upload came down. Well, thank you so much, Julie. We'll definitely be following thank this you. case and very closely, as well as every other um, copyright case out there. It's a very important issue to follow. That was Julie thank Samuels, you. staff attorney with the Electronic Frontier Foundation.